What's up guys, Ryan here from Mudgunner and today it is viewer build video episode 17. And you'll notice this one is a little bit shorter than most and I'll get into that. But the theme was quad rail guns. So any gun with a quad rail on there, it's one of my favorite ways of mounting stuff. I like quad rails. I like them a little bit more than M-Lock but I do have a lot of M-Lock rails. This is just favorite aesthetics wise. So yeah, that was the theme. And the reason why today's video is a little bit short is a couple reasons. One, I honestly didn't get too many submissions this week. Two, a few of the submissions were duplicates, and even if they were used in previous videos but they still fit this one, or if there were slight changes, I don't wanna get into the habit of using duplicates because then if we get too many, I'll just have to sift through too many. So I just kinda of wanna make it a point to not use duplicate submissions, but thank you guys for submitting again. They do count as part of the Quadrail video, but you know, since we use them for other videos, I just don't wanna get into that habit. So that's my reason for that. And then a third option is I did get some builds this week that were just not Quadrail guns. I still get submissions from previous videos, so maybe people don't notice the time date of when I posted that video. So yeah, I do get uh, pictures and submissions that would classify as other ones, but um, it's also hard to keep track of. So if you sent me a picture or uh, submission like four weeks ago that would qualify for this, it gets buried in my email. So I'm sorry if it looks like I never looked at your gun. I looked at it at one point, it's just they get buried in the email. So. If there's ever a video you wanna participate in and you've sent me a build in past that would work for that that I never posted, just send it again because again, it just gets buried. And yeah, other than that, again, that's kind of the only reason why stuff didn't get chosen this week, but everything that was sent to me this week that qualified and wasn't a duplicate made it in. So we didn't get too many. And if you wanna participate in next week's video, we're gonna do one that I haven't done before, which is uh, what is your EDC? So EDC video, um, it could be a handgun, it could be a long gun or a rifle, something like that, if it's your everyday carry. I everyday carry a backpack to work with a SIG MPX and a Serbu Super Shorty shotgun. So that would classify it as an EDC. But I would say the main theme is what do you carry on your person every day gun wise? If you wanna take a picture of your gun next to your knife, that's fine too, we could do that. Or next to your medical or next to your flashlight, because I also carry a flashlight, I carry a knife, I carry, you know, a lot of stuff. And it does change a little bit. So yeah, but my main carry this year has been my Glock 43 done up by Langdon Tactical. So it actually says Mud Gunner on the slide. They engraved it for me. It's got a Trigicon RMR CC built into the slide or milled into the slide. Still has iron sights. Uh, I think it's a Timney or Apex trigger. I think it's an Apex trigger. I don't know Glock triggers very well, guys but it's in a tier one concealed holster and then it's got Terran tactical base pads. So that's been my EDC for this year. Prior to that, the longest one I've ever had so far was my Smith & Wesson Shield. I carried this for about six years. I will never get rid of it because I really like it, but it's a gen one shield, Trigicon Night Sights Apex Trigger, also in my very first tier one concealed holster. This was a gift from a friend, so yeah. That was my very first EDC. And then now that it's getting cooler here in Arizona and I can eventually start wearing jackets, it's still 100 degrees, but it is getting cooler. Once I'm able to start wearing a jacket, I will carry this more, which this is my Shadow Systems MR918 Elite. So it's a double stack gun, basically a Glock 19. And I normally carry it with a 15 or 17 round mag and then a 17 round spare. Also in a tier one concealed holster. That just happens to be my favorite holster that I use. And I have the three holsters done up by them and they work really well. So again, EDC is next week's theme. If you wanna participate in that, I will tell you at the end of the video or look down in the description of this video. So with that being said, thank you guys to everyone that submitted and check out these awesome builds. All right guys, starting off this week's viewer build video, we have Alan with three sweet quad railed builds. So let's get into this. Up top, he has a Zestava ZPAP 92. In the middle, a Daniel Defense M4A1. And then on the bottom, a Daniel Defense Mark 18. So we're gonna start from the top with the Zestava ZPAP 92 and going through their build list here. He's got a Streamlight ProTac with the pressure pad and a Cloud Defense pressure pad mount. He's got an Aimpoint Pro on a Unity riser, a JMAC Customs Grip and Folding Brace, and then a Wadson OGL laser. I'm not familiar with Wadson, but OGL is kind of like the modern EOTech laser, I believe, or L3 laser. So maybe this is just a clone of it, but yeah, that looks like a sweet build. And then other than that, I think the front end is mostly factory Zestava. So it comes with their quad rail, their muzzle device. I believe it comes with that angled grip as well. Correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, that's a sweet build. And I bet it shoots like a dream. So thank you for sharing that one. And then next up we have his Daniel Defense DDM4 M4A1. So that's a factory gun with a 14 and a half inch barrel. Their quad rail, it's the wrist too. And going through the build list, he's got a Cloud Defense Rain with a pressure pad. 
an EOTech EXPS3 with the G34 magnifier on an ADM mount. Is that 34 or 43? You might mean 43 or 33. I can't tell from this picture. Um, yeah, because I believe they do a 33, a 43, and a 45. And this he did put 34, but I, I think it's a 43. So yeah, EOTech EXPS3 with the magnifier on an American defense mount, and then a blackout defense zero trigger. And other than that, also just a mostly factory gun. Data defense is really nice out of the box. So yeah, thank you for sharing that one. And then lastly, we have the Daniel Defense Mark 18. So it's factory gun with their barrel, their rail, it's a 10.3 inch barrel. And then going through his build list, he's got a Streamlight TLR RM1 with the pressure pad and Cloud Defense pressure pad mount. He's got a Holosun LS321 laser, a Vortex UH1 with the Vortex 3X magnifier on a Unity fast riser mount, a Timney AR Pro trigger, and then an Odin collapsible pistol brace. And yeah, that one looks pretty sweet as well. So yeah, thank you for sharing all three of those, Alan. They look great. This next one comes from Brandon, and this is their Block 1 inspired clone, or M4 Block 1 inspired clone. So I'm gonna go through his build list here. He's got an Aero Precision upper assembly, a standard A2 birdcage slash flash hider, an M4 profile nitride barrel, a PNS products handguard, which I'm not familiar with PNS, He's got a Tango Down Quick Detach Vertical Grip, a Streamlight HLX Light with the pressure pad. It's got a CQD front sling mount, an Aero Nitride Bolt Carrier Group. It's got a Primary Arms 2.5 ACSS Optic. It's got Griffin Backup Iron Sights, a Geisley Airborne Charging Handle, an Aero Lower with the Aero Parts Kit, an Ergo Grip, a Rear CQD Sling Mount, Aero buffer tube and buffer, and then a B5 sop mod stock. And yeah, that looks good. That definitely fits the vibe of like a Block 1 M4A1 really well. And yeah, I like it. So thank you for sharing that. Oh, also he didn't mention a sling, but it looks like he has a Magpul MS3 sling above it. I think that's the MS3 with the Periclips. So yeah, thank you for sharing that one, Brandon. This next build comes from Gilberto. And this one looks interesting. So he says, this is his AAC MPW N300 Blackout with a 16 inch barrel. And I'm curious, is AAC, you mean Advanced Armament Corp, like the suppressor company? Because I didn't even know they do ARs. Uh, but yeah, so AAC MPW, it's chambered in 300 Blackout, which makes me think it's AAC, the suppressor company. And then this came with an OEM Knights Quadrel with the built-in front sight and factory Geisley SSA trigger. That's pretty sweet. Since purchase, I upgraded the furniture to B5. So it's got a B5 pistol grip and stop mod stock a Magpul Enhanced Trigger Guard and Ejection Port, a Geisley Super Charging Handle with the Geisley H1 Buffer and Tube. The rest is OEM AAC. So that's cool. I don't know anything about their guns. I know about their suppressors. They do cool suppressors. So that looks like it has their, uh, what is it, the T51 Flash Hider set up for their suppressors. Again, it's a 16-inch barrel. And yeah, he's saying the rest is all factory to them. I only have the one picture to go off of so we don't get to see the other side, but... Um, either way, that looks really good. It kind of reminds me of an LMT MRP, like their monolithic quadrail rifle. But yeah, that's cool. I know AAC does good suppressors and I assume their gun is pretty decent. And yeah, thank you for sharing that one, Gilberto. All right, this next one comes from Jay Cook and this looks like a pretty sweet build. So I'm gonna just go through his description here. This is my factory LMT SBR bought about eight years ago. It's a 10 and a half inch barrel. That's sweet. I assume it's 5.56, he didn't mention it here. But uh, yeah, going through his build list, he's got a diamond head rear sight, a Daniel Defense fixed front sight, an EOTech 512 with an EOTech integrated laser battery cap, which is discontinued. I actually used to have one of those. Word of advice, don't use alkaline batteries, even though they ship with them, because mine exploded in the cover. Luckily, they replaced it though. Uh, yeah, so lithium on those. He's got a B5 SOP mod stock, a gas buster charging handle, a single stage trigger, a bootleg adjustable bolt carrier group, a Troy front vertical grip, Knights Armament rail covers, a Silencer Co. Spec War 556 suppressor, a Magpul sling, and lastly, a Streamlight Protec light, which was purchased when they were first released and is still going strong. Yeah, that looks nice. It looks like, from the picture, you might have a Midwest Industries mount for that Streamlight, and a Magpul QD RSA, maybe a Magpul MS4 sling from the looks of it. 
You got the Trump Fight magazine. I think that's a Mission First mag, if I can see that right. And then a BCM grip. But yeah, that thing looks sick. Also, it looks like your EOTech is on a riser, which you did not mention your riser. But yeah, that thing looks pretty sick. Looking at your setup, it makes me miss my EOTech battery cap laser, but I ended up selling it. And then same thing with that Specwar 556, that looks sick. And I know they don't do those anymore, but those are from Silence Ago. So yeah, thanks for sharing, Jay Cook. That's a pretty sweet build. This next one comes from Stefan, and this is his Mark 18 Frankenstein build. So going from tip to butt, we have a Huxworks 556K suppressor. It's a Daniel Defense Mark 18 upper. It's got a Unity Tactical front sight post an enlarged gas port. It's got a 37 mil flare slash grenade launcher, a Palmetto State Armory lower, a Mepro GLS grenade aiming device. That's sweet. An EOTech EXPS 3-0, a BERT trigger. It's B-R-R-T-T-T. -T -T. It's got an anti-walk pin set on there, oversized magazine release, a Geisley Maritime bolt catch. It's got a H2 buffer, a Geisley MG42 buffer spring, a Radian Raptor safety selector and charging handle, a B5 P23 pistol grip, and a B5 Bravo stock, an Edgar Sherman sling, and then areas of the weapon wrapped in the arid multicam wrap from Ranger wraps. And yeah, that thing looks sick. I like the multi shades of FDE. He also has a Gen 3 Magpul mag in there. But yeah, that's a sweet looking Mark 18 build. Thank you for sharing that one, Stefan. Looks like we got our first Quadrail subgun of the day, and this comes from, I believe, Renee would be how I pronounce your name. And this is their CZ Scorpion. So going from tip to butt, they have a Silencer Co. Omega 9K direct thread suppressor, a Magpul RVG vertical grip, an Enforce Gen 3 WMLX light, an Asalon charging handle. I think I pronounced that right, I'm not sure. It's got an Ed Sherman sling, a Timney trigger, an HBI Industries Duckbill Red Magazine release. It's got an aftermarket bolt from Nexus Firearms. And then they say that bolt fixes the issues with possible out of battery detonations from the stock bolt that's made out of soft metal. It's got a SIG Romeo on a riser, an AK style safety selector on the right side only, and then a Nexus Firearms ACR style stock. And yeah, that looks sick. I like the gray color. You didn't mention your grip. It looks like you have a mag pull grip on there. I really like the gray and black on that Scorpion. And magazine wise, I forget who makes that magazine. Is it Manicor Arms? Comment down below with the mag because it's not a factory Scorpion mag and that's not a factory Scorpion grip. So I think the grip's mag pull and I think the mag is Manicor. But yeah, thank you for sharing that one, Renee. It looks great and I bet it's sweet to shoot. All right, this next one comes from George. It looks like we have two pretty sick looking AR setups here. I'm digging that camo on the bottom. So up top we have a BCM SBR, and then on the bottom we have a Bushmaster XM15. So I'm gonna start with the BCM, and on their build list here from tip to butt, we have an A2 flash hider, and they have an Otter Creek Polonium K suppressor and ATF gel. They have a 100 Concepts ruggedized light cap, and a Surefire M640 dual fuel turbo light. It's got Troy M4 backup iron sights. It's got Magpul rail covers and the Magpul XTM handstop kit. It's got an EOTech EXPS 3-4 with the LARP Labs multicam wrap. That looks good. It's got a Holosun HM3X with the LARP Labs multicam wrap as well. It's got a Geisley supercharging handle, a Magpul MOE pistol grip, a B5 SOT mod stock, and then a Blue Force Gear Vicker sling. And that looks sick, I dig it. And again, that's a BCM, that looks pretty clean. And he did say it's an SBR. So it's a 14 and a half inch barrel, but it being an SBR means that muzzle device is not pinned, which will be nice once you have your suppressor. So thank you for sharing that one, George. And then going down to his Bushmaster here. Again, I love that camo job. I assume you did it yourself. He's got a Bushmaster XM15-E2S. It's got a Midwest Industries two-piece quad rail, a 100 Concepts light cap, on a Streamlight Protac light. It's got PNS rail covers. Second time I've heard about those rail covers today, but I've never heard about them prior to that. This is why I like doing these videos. You learn new companies. It's got the Magpul XTM hand stop kit. It's got a SIG Romeo 5 Red Dot, which is a placeholder until they decide on a ACOG TA02 or an LPVO. Honestly, the ACOG would look really sick on that, especially if you do the same color job, but LPVO would be good too. 
It's got Magpul MBUS rear sight. It's got a Radian Raptor charging handle, a Magpul MOE pistol grip, a B5 Sot Mod stock, and then a Blue Force Gear Vickers padded sling. Nice. Yeah, that one looks great. Looks like they both have Magpul windowed mags. And yeah, those are six setups. Thanks for sharing, George. All right, this last one comes from Jose, and this is his Colt M4A1 SOCOM rifle. So it's a 14 and a half inch barrel. So I'm gonna go through his build list here from tip to butt. He has the factory pin and welded muzzle brake on there, a Surefire M951 light with the IR cap. It's got the AN slash PEC 2A laser on top. So I assume that's a real one. I have no way to tell fakes or not, but this thing looks legit, especially if you went all out with the Colt. It's got a Knight's Armament quad rail, it's got the Knight's Armament broom handle grip, an Aimpoint Comp M2 red dot. It's got an M4 aluminum clipazine that I carried on my first tour in Iraq from 2005 to 2006. Thank you for your service. Now I can see why you built this up. It looks sick. Hopefully you were using something like this. It's got a Picatinny steel flip up rear sight. Is that the Matek one? You put Picatinny steel flip up sight, but I think that's made by Matek. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's got an Ambi safety selector the factory trigger group, factory pistol grip, and factory butt stock. And then it's got a Spec Ops extra magazine pouch. Carried this on my first and second tour to Iraq, 2005 to 2006 and 2007 to 2008. I could not find my original sling, that's why I don't have one on. Well, that thing is sick. Thank you for sharing. And then Angel has a YouTube channel. I always pronounce it as Angel Silver 4 T7, but if you say it fast, it's Angel Silver 47 but I always spell it out for you guys anyways. But yeah, that thing is sick and uh, I dig it. I definitely wouldn't mind doing a setup like that to clone one day. So thank you for sharing Jose. And that's a strong finish to this week's viewer build video. Thank you again to everyone that participated. These were all great. Again, if you did not make it in this week's video, but you've sent me pictures in the past, just send me new pictures going forward whenever I post a new topic, because again, they do get buried in my emails. Again, the theme for this week or this coming week is going to be EDC. So what is your EDC gun? Um, you could take a picture of just the gun, the gun next to the holster. Ideally have your gun out of the holster just so we could see it. So this would be a good horizontal picture like this. And again, do a horizontal picture because that's how it's gonna show best on YouTube. You'll notice some get a border on the top and bottom. That's because they're too long. So if you can crop it to 16 by nine, I know you could do it on an iPad or iPhone, iPad, probably the same thing. Um, but yeah, if you can crop it to 16 by nine, that is how YouTube shows you on your phone or computer screen. So that's gonna be the best way. Ideally a high quality picture. And then you can send the picture to my email. It is sales at atroxco.com. And then if you're looking to support the channel, you can check out my website. It's just atroxco.com. And for the month of September, I am doing a deal where if you buy my patch wrap patch, it's got my girlfriend's hair on it. If you buy my patch wrap patch, it will come with a free mud gunner patch. I also did this because I did my uh, safe door video earlier this month where I built patch walls for my safe doors. You should go check those videos out. And yeah, I'm big into patches. So again, if you buy a patch wrap patch, you will get this for free for the rest of September, which we have one more week. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for my next video.